Hello everyone, what's up? Me again, Junker Master 3. And this is the second take for this video because I already made this video and I was like rambling on for like 13 or 14 minutes. And when I finished the video, I realized, oh damn, I've missed out on one movie on this list. So yeah, what, what to do? So I'm making this video again. So this is going to be my top 10 uh, movies, horror films from 1988. And that's pretty much one of the hardest lists for me to do because there's so many great horror films that came out in that year. And that's the uh, year which I've, where I've watched the most movies from uh, that specific year. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, like I'm probably going to say many times that this is not like something that's written in stone. So, because this, I mean, my opinion can change from time to time. So it's really hard to pick out my 10 favorite ones uh, uh, from this year to be specific so uh, yeah it's very hard to do so I'm gonna do my best at this and yeah I'm gonna continue with this video and yeah let's begin right away before I talk way too long first up at number 10 we have a film called 976 Evil which was directed by none other than Robert Englund himself Freddy Krueger um, and this movie has Stephen Jeffries in it, which is pretty interesting because Stephen Jeffries, he was actually offered to reprise his role as Evil Ed in the Fright Night Part 2 movie. But uh, he decided to uh, stick with this movie instead because he obviously was like asked by Robert Englund, do you want to be in my film? And of course he couldn't say no to that, so he decided to uh, go with this film instead. But this film was basically about Stephen Jeffries' character. He is pretty much picked on by everyone and every yeah, every person in this community and uh, he's like really like I think he's like really in love with this girl but she has like no feelings for him whatsoever so everyone makes a fool out of him and uh, he's like has a really bad um, has it really bad at his home as well uh, so uh, one day he decides to call this telephone line or whatever uh, and uh, yeah 976 evil and of course there's some really weird thing going on so he get, pretty much gets like possessed by satan himself or something so it, this has sort of similarities with evil speak in a way we just replace the computer with the telephone and you'll get this probably um, but yeah really great uh, special effects and creature effects if i remember correctly or like the makeup effects uh, and sadly this is very like forgotten or like not talked about by that much uh, anymore or at least that's just how I feel so yeah 976 evil at number 10 and at number 9 we have another film which I've talked about quite many times I believe this is actually uh, a case where I actually prefer the sequel over this one but still this one is still really good because this has Bruce Campbell in it and the movie is Maniac Cop uh, so if you like your slasher films from the 80s and you haven't seen this one uh, check this one out this is basically about a cop that gets there's like some backstory that this cop basically got uh, sentenced to prison and of course when he gets sentenced to prison he got assaulted by uh, other prisoners there which he has which he himself had put there to begin with so they pretty much like beat him up and all type of really like disturbing things um, so then he of course finally he gets out and he pretty much is a maniac cop so uh, he's dressed up with this, as this cop and he basically kills off people uh, so yeah maniac cop number nine and then a film on number eight which is a film which I don't hear anyone talk about but I think more people should give it a chance and watch this one and the film is called Pin this is, if I remember correctly, this is more psychological horror than a straightforward like slasher film or something like that. But it's about this creepy doll, which I believe there's like two siblings and one of them is like really scared of this doll. And this doll basically, it sort of like possesses their spirit or something, which is really weird. Uh, but yeah, this is another one which I really need to rewatch as well because I haven't seen this one in quite some time. But... Yeah, more people should see this one if you like psychological horror. Check this one out. Uh, pin uh, at number eight. And at number seven is... I'm actually pulling out the box set here. Uh, 
I think there's pretty damn many sequels in this list to begin with, but uh, yeah. At number 7 we have A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. Um, I'm not really sure what it's called. Part 4, the Dream Monster, right? Yeah, the Dream Monster. Um, let's see here, yeah. Uh, this is one which I really, really like. I know most people probably like Part 1 and Part 3 the most, but I would say Part 4 is probably... Uh, right there behind uh, part 1 and 3 as the best one or like one of the best ones in this series so uh, yeah I'm not gonna say anything else about this film because I think most people have probably already seen this films to begin with so yeah uh, at number 7 uh, Nightmare on Elm Street part 4 the Dream Master now we come to number 6 which is a remake of an older film from the 50s I believe and the film is called The Blob I have also seen the original one and I think it feels a little bit dated. I still think it's a good film, but this one is just pretty much one of the best horror remakes out there, even in my opinion. Uh, the creature effects are so great and I really like the actors and the acting in it and the characters in general. Um, so uh, yeah, the soundtrack is really great one uh, in this one as well. So And this cover art is just awesome in my opinion. Uh, and here it actually says it, but in Swedish, scream while you still can. Uh, because this blob basically eats people and there's up to some of these people in this town to try to stop it. Uh, so yeah, the blob. At number 6. Now we are at number 5, so halfway through this video already. Uh, at number 5 is another sequel, and that movie is Sleepaway Camp 2 on Happy Campers. Um, the first one plays out like a straightforward slasher film, it's supposed to be creepy and really bloody and gore and stuff like that. Uh, this one has some really great... I mean, this is more silly than the first one. I mean, I would say all of these Sleepaway Camp movies uh, after the first one is really silly and sort of stupid in their own charming way. But the kills are really great in, this, in these films in general and especially this one. And um, the cover art just is awesome because there's a kill involving these two, the mask and the... And the glove and the Freddy glove um, and um, yeah if you like the Friday the 13th films in general I think you would probably love the sleepaway camp movies as well um, but yeah this is probably one of my favorite ones in this series I really like all of them uh, except for maybe return to sleepaway camp which I wouldn't say that I love but I think it's all right for what it is even though they have some really irritating characters in that one but uh, yeah, Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers, really cool film. And this actually has uh, Pamela Springsteen in it, who is the sister of Bruce Springsteen, and also Rene Estevez, who is the sister of uh, Emilio Estevez. I probably said something wrong, I think I said something wrong here. But, oh, anyway, let's see here. That's number five. And at number four, we have another sequel. Damn. Yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, this one I'm really really glad that I have because I believe this is still very hard to come across and I would say this is a really really well made sequel actually not as good as the first one but damn it's close in my opinion uh, and the movie is called Fright Night Part 2 and uh, I actually had, a f had I actually have a friend who I watched both of do these films with and it feels like the majority of people actually do prefer the first one. I'm actually one of them. But my friend said, oh, I really prefer this one over the first one. Uh, which is totally fine. I can see that. Uh, but still, I mean, this one is uh, about... Should I spoil it or have people... That's something when it comes to sequel. I'm not really sure if I should like talk about this one. Because if you talk about a horror sequel you pretty much has to have to spoil the first one. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. But uh, really well made sequel. If you like vampire films from the 80s, give this one a shot. This is pretty much one of the very best ones from that decade. So uh, yeah, Fright Night Part 2. Uh, really glad to have that movie in my collection. And then at number 3 we have a uh, film... This came out pretty damn many years uh, after the first one, but uh, yeah, the film is Phantasm 2. I've always wondered why it took so long before uh, 
uh, they made a sequel because apparently the original one was a big hit back in the day and uh, this is also the phantasm film which has the highest budget of them all uh, I like all of the phantasm films but I would probably say the first three are my favorite ones Part 4 is still really good and part 5 is definitely the weakest one but I still think it was a nice ending to a series. So uh, yeah, Phantasm 2 and Angus Scream who plays the tall man in these films. He must have scared some people back in the day that were young at that time to death. Because I can only imagine being like a small little kid watching these films back in the day. I mean, yeah, really creepy. But yeah, uh, Phantasm 2. At number three. Now, when it comes to number two and number one, is this is really hard because it could have gone either way. And I sort of feel like a stupid asshole while, I mean, because I don't want to talk about either of these films that much because I've talked about these movies so many times uh, throughout my, like, time here on YouTube. So, at number two, we have... Night of the Demons, which I've talked about so many times, and I'm not going to say that much other than check it out if you like Halloween-themed horror films. Because this is a great, great film to watch during the Halloween season, and I always tend to do that myself. So, yeah, and the soundtrack is great, and the characters are really... Some of them are, like, unlikable, but they're meant to be unlikable, and, uh, yeah, some really cool... I mean, it's a good mix between, like, comedy and horror I would say so yeah night of the demons at number two and then we have number one like i said before could have gone either way between these two films because i love all of these films in general it could have been in any other order but this is how it is at at this time at number one we have pumpkin head uh, directed by stan winston who is like a mastermind when it comes to uh, special effects and practical effects in general so uh, and I believe this was one of the very few films he directed himself and uh, you can clearly tell that he's been involved in some really great movies because he worked on the Terminator and Alien and obviously the Pumpkinhead the creature for Pumpkinhead was Pumpkinhead was probably like inspired by the Alien films like the Alien creature I believe so yeah and also the I actually do like the sequels to this movie as well, even though they're not nearly as good as the first one. I still really like the sequels, uh, despite what any people or anyone say. I think one of the another reason why I like this movie so much is because I remember that I watched this, I believe, on TV the first time I watched this, and I was pretty damn scared of this because I thought it was so atmospheric and creepy and. Yeah, just with the location where they shot it felt really creepy because like this small little town or village or whatever up in the mountains and there's like fog all over the place and like and like um, trees like uh, dead trees and stuff. Um, yeah, this is so atmospheric. Great film. Uh, so yeah, if you like creature films in general, check this one out. This is one of the best ones in my opinion. So and very overlooked as well. So yeah, Pumpkinhead at number one. Now, finally, this is the last time I'm going to attempt to make this video. So if anything it gets really like bad in this video, that's how it goes. And uh, yeah, hope everyone enjoyed. And uh, I'm not going to say I didn't get bored because I know that there's some people out there that don't like me when I say that. So yeah, hope everyone enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.